Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Shabazz Ansari and here I am yet with another video. I've been away from this YouTube thing for quite a while, but I intend to be back. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to do a clinical audit. You may have come across this term, what is a clinical audit, a few times in your NHS journey, or even if you're giving for your in, going for your interviews in the NHS, because it is a very important aspect of medicine if you want to practice medicine in the UK. So uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about what is a clinical audit and take you through uh, the process of how to do a clinical audit with appropriate examples so you get a better understanding of the whole process. And in the end of the video, I will be giving you a few ideas as well of few um, quick uh, audit topics that you can uh, get uh, done and dusted in a few days time in order to add a few star marks on your portfolio. Okay, so let's get right into it. So what is clinical audit? A clinical audit is basically a process to find out uh, whether the healthcare that is being provided is up to the set standards or not. And what are the ways that we can make uh, improvements in order to get a better outcome? That is the gist of it. There can be many and many definitions, but this is the basic understanding of what is a clinical audit. Okay, so clinical audit now comprises of six steps. First of all, identifying the issue. Let me give you an example. So we would want to see if a neck of the femur fracture comes in into the hospital, how soon uh, are they seen by the orthogeriatrics? So this is the issue that we have opt obtained. The second step is obtaining um, a certain standard or a guideline. For example, in the, in the scenario that we have discussed, the set guidelines that according to NICE guidelines and best practice tariff, a patient who comes in with the neck of the femur fracture uh, has to be seen by an orthogeriatrician within 72 hours. So there you go. This is just a guideline. And when talking about guidelines, it could be from NICE guidelines, it could be from best practice tariff, it could be the uh, American society, um, any society that you are basically concerned with and your audit is related to, you can quote them if there is none of the guideline that is present with the area of uh, question that you're asking, you can actually refer to your local guidelines as well or you can formulate your own guidelines with the help of your senior consultant and it's actually going to be a quality improvement project as well. Okay. Step number three is data collection. We are going to either put a number of patients, for example, 50 or 100, or set a retrospective timeline from June 2023, for example, until December 23, how many patients that were admitted by neck of the femur fracture in the hospital were actually seen by orthogeriatrician and what was the time frame. So this data collection is going to become a reference point for further steps that you're going to attain uh, in the next steps. Okay. The fourth step is analysis. So in this step, you are basically going to analyze the data that you collected from the previous step and analyze it uh, against the set standards that have been mentioned. In our example, it should be 100% that a neck of the femur fracture should be seen 100% in 72 hours. So whatever finding that you're going to get, that is going to be a set reference point for further steps. The fifth step is implementation of change. For example, um, in our audit that we are doing right now in the neck of the femur fracture, there's 50% adherence of the fact that orthogeriatrics saw 50% um, of the neck of the femur fracture patients. So this is a reference point. Now we need to implement change in the way of poster presentation. We are going to talk to people, our colleague, uh, put up a teaching, uh, present this audit into the morbidity or mortality or audit meeting in order for people to be aware that we need to do better and this is the current status that we are at. So this is going to be implementation of change. And the final step is re-audit. It's going to be the same process that you're going to repeat. But since in the previous steps, you've got a set point, which in our case, for example, was 50%. After a certain amount of month or a certain period of time, you're going to re-audit. You're going to collect the data and then analyze it and compare it with the previous data collection that you had. In our case, there was 50% of adherence in um, neck of the femur fracture patients, which were seen by other geriatrics with, um, within 72 hours. It was 50%. So we need to improve. And if there is, there is improvement, 
it's going to be a positive saying so this was a successful audit if it is not and we are going down we need to repeat the cycle again okay and if you repeat three cycles of the same audit it's going to be a quality improvement project so in a nutshell this is how you do a clinical audit you don't need to do complex and long clinical audits in order to score points a few uh, small and simple audits are sufficient enough to tick boxes and put those things on your portfolio in order to improve your portfolio um yeah and i will be putting a few uh, audit topics in the bio below for you to complete by the end of the week really so i hope you like this video and i intend to post more videos like this please give me topics that you want me to speak about in order to help yourself um yeah that's about it for now uh, i hope you have a lovely week bye bye